have to mention this article courtesy of complex has been absolutely running riot and causing loads of angry debates um passionate debates furious debates with my side of the internet regarding the streetwear power ranking courtesy of complex um complex do a really good job at kind of riding the algorithm becoming viral by having these sort of like listicle type things right whether it's with hip-hop and shit whether it's with songs whether it's with rappers whatever right they have a good job of like stirring up controversy and clicks and engagement so i guess you should probably look at it through that lens but i haven't really seen people do this before like a power ranking or maybe i haven't noticed it from previous years i know hypebeast does like the 100 most important people but it's just the same old fucking names and it's not really that important but this power ranking to say who's first and who's second who's third who's fourth or fifth and actually ranking them in terms of their you know influence on the scene it's going to be very interesting to see because i'm sure they must have fucked up a bunch because i saw people crying about it online but i went to save it so i can react to it in real time with you guys here so courtesy of complex it says the streetwear power ranking the complex street power ranking reflects which individuals have the most power in streetwear from Tremaine Emery to Pharrell to Yoon An. So let's let's continue this article. It says, how do you define streetwear in 2023? Um, this is a complicated question since the category used to feel very specific. In the 90s, streetwear brands drew then a like, new shop cultures like skateboarding, punk, hip-hop and graffiti. They produced literal streetwear like t-shirts, hoodie, jeans and tracksuits and sneakers that targeted younger audiences. But the category has evolved and subcultures cultures it reflects and are now multi-billion dollar industries which themselves are the, the definition of streetwear much more nebulous and in our opinion it's a good thing it's always been a good thing i think that was one of the things i didn't agree with virgil um before he passed away his kind of rejection of streetwear i always felt like it was a much better way to categorize what these guys were doing than fashion fashion with a capital f i feel like is best presented when it comes to women's fashion in my personal opinion i don't really think men's fashion ever hits the heady heights of women because women just do fashion better than us i don't know why that is maybe they're able to you know maybe they're able to kind of dream and fantasize and create these very immersive worlds way more than us like men maybe they don't wear you know as many functional pieces of clothing it's all about style and shit and we're all about pockets and hoods and materials and all that nonsense i don't really know but i always thought streetwear was a better way to kind of encapsulate whatever it is you're doing as opposed to fashion with the f or even just menswear but a lot of designers you know they look at fashion and they think that's the you know that's the zenith that's the fucking the top of my kinemanjaro that's what i need to be at and they kind of poo poo away fashion they go to fashion they realize they're not cut out for it and then they try to slink back into the streetwear i fucking hate it or well, we continue we define streetwear as clothing that appeals to youth culture and taps into the zeitgeist it still references hip-hop skate punk graffiti i wonder how many people kids now nowadays can name a punk song and can actually tag let alone do an ollie because i thought those were all the fundamental parts of me getting to the scene when i was going on crooked tongues forums when i was arguing with fucking old men on fifth dimension forum when i was posting fits on fuk when i was hanging around on fucking super future forum part of the part of the fucking initiation process was to be about it you didn't want to just talk you went to be about it so you'd be in your garden trying to learn how to ollie you'd be writing in your sketchbook and trying to you know trying to get your fucking tag right um you know <laughs> trying to do that and then going outside and failing you were trying to go to loads of interesting punk or metal shows and take pictures and buy the band t-shirts you wanted to be you wanted to be about it, right? You didn't just want to just wear a t-shirt for the sake of it and have not have no idea what the band was. You wanted to live it. Now they just not doesn't really feel like it. Everything feels like an aesthetic, or as the kids say now, there's an aura, right? A vibe, um, which is disappointing, really, because I feel like just dabbling into these things, even if you don't do them well, they will usually yield good results because you're gonna get something from it in the end i feel like but hey what do i know but the consumer base is broader and it's not dedicated to the price point so it's not dictated by a price point if gucci can sell a 500 dollar t-shirt why can't a streetwear designer um some consumers like resellers look to streetwear for financial gain others participate because they want to follow trends okay cool well, too much of this shit so who do they got here oh no they've got this donut um the guy from fucking um what's it called what's his brand called again they've got colin D delane calm delane sorry colin calm delane from um kid super the guy who i always say if you're in fashion and you've got a bit of imposter syndrome please look at kid super that guy won an lvmh prize designing the shit that he does right that looks no it looks like a fucking modern day version of peg leg 
and he won fucking LVMH prize. So if you've got imposter syndrome, you feel like you don't belong, you feel like you're getting, you know, dagger eyes from your lecturers at St. Martin's like I used to get, if you feel like you are, you know, you're slacking behind some of the students in your class like I used to do, don't feel discouraged, keep plugging away because if Con Delane can get an LVMH prize, so can you for blood clot. It continues. We've got Clint419 um, from Cortez at 24. I think that's a bit low considering the fucking absolute chokehold this guy has on kids between the ages of like 15 and 22 right he goes to he's done it because the thing you have to consider he doesn't just do these drops in london and cause roadblocks he goes to new york he's been to like paris and shit like he goes to different parts of the world he's able to do these surprise drops whether it's trainers or hoodies and t-shirts and shit and he has the kids running has the kids queuing outside of shops, has the kids writing coordinates into their phone to find drops for sneakers. Like, it's fucking immense. He fucking crowdsources designs for football jerseys. Like, the kids really fuck with him heavy. So I think 24 is really low for Clint, in my personal opinion. It's super, super low, 24. Um, because I don't think... He, you know, what, what what does Kid Super have, really, on the industry? If it's a power ranking, influence overall, right? Because that's, that, that's the thing, right? Um let's see um these lists aren't meant to troll they're meant to be tell a story about the state of the industry and we love and respect with that being so okay what's the hold on um how did we make this list we included people who make and sell apparel and sneakers we expect which explains why people like isaac rocky or Sias and matthew henson who are both incredible influential on the list okay um then a panel including a well-informed members of the style and sneakers team hopefully they didn't get fucking jeff Sta hopefully jeff staples not in this list if he's on this list then this list is fucking gob um their current relevance and brand desirability so that's a list here so they included um they have to make stuff the categories include their overall if sorry let me put it here their overall influence in fashion right now their current relevance and brand desirability, their overall body of work, their styling power consistency, the value they bring to the larger brands. And after telling all those scores, we hashed it out. Okay, cool. That's how they scored it. I still think these guys are, I, I don't think Combe belongs in the top 25 per se, maybe top 50, not top 25. And I think Clint's too low. We continue. We've got Angelo back from, uh, what's that brand called? What's the fucking called again? Awake, Aways, what's it called? Awake NY, um, former Supreme Team guy, and now got his own brand. <sighs> Is twenty three too low or too high for Angelo Back? Hmm. I say he's probably just about right. He probably belongs in the top twenty five. You think of the Asics collaborations. You think about the sellout and the stuff alone. You think about the Dover Street activations. You think about his connections overall, the store. Like, yeah, maybe 23 is probably right. Maybe top 25 is right. You continue. You've got Yoon An from Ambush. I think this is a bit too high. Um, Yoon is kind of weird, isn't it? In that the fashion doesn't really match the sneaker collaborations in terms of hype or desirability. I don't think anyone really checks for the clothes that she makes on the runway. I don't really know if they sell well in clo in actual stores. I'm not really too sure. Um, but she seems to be a supreme creative. She seems to be able to operate and collaborate with these big brands and corporations very, very easily. And she's been involved in the scene for a very long time. Like she's an actual OG. But I don't think the fashion matches the shoes, the collabs. They seem to be the ones that people actually resonate more to with her. Um, I'm still annoyed that I haven't got a fucking date. I did remember tweeting her one time about wondering when those fucking New Rock boots, the kind of New Rock style boots that she put out for one of her recent um, ambush collections would come out. I've not got any idea. You know, these people, you tweet them sometimes, ask them questions and they don't fucking answer. They just keep posting more fucking lift selfies, which is fucking annoying. But apart from that, I think this is probably a little bit of a, I, I wouldn't have her on a list. Because I say, I don't think people check for her clothes. I think people mostly check for her shoes. And I don't think just making shoes should be enough for you to have. To, it should, unless you're like, you know, Joe Freshgoods, who's actually culturally relevant, I don't think you just should belong here for sneakers only. It should be a little bit more than that. But hey, what do I know? Kanye West 21 is insane. <laughs> like, that is so low. That is so disrespectful. Considering that that palette or just the silhouettes that he has at Yeezy has influenced all the brands that exist nowadays like there's an entire what's that brand there's one brand that's like their color scheme is blue and they just copy all the shapes that that that, that kanye has done under yeezy 
So the fact that he's 21, and even just forget his stuff, just the influence he's had alone on kids wearing Balenciaga should be enough for him to be a bit higher on the list. 21 is insane. Um, who's here? Who's above him? Chris Gibbs. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Come on. You're saying the guy from Union is above Kanye. And look, they do some cool shit. Like Union, Chris Gibbs and his wife should be higher up the list. They should be probably top 10. But he doesn't belong higher than, he, than, than Kanye. That, that, that doesn't make any sense, really and truly. Yes, collaborations, bang. Yes, the store union is a fucking, is literally um, one of our last iconic stores in streetwear. Um, the selections in there are amazing. They've got a great buying team. I'm not sure if it's just him and his wife that does it or other people that do it. Um, they're clearly OGs and story in there, like great. But above Kanye at 20, insane um grace while bonner at 19 is also pretty insane um when you think of streetwear is she even a streetwear designer like that's actually a, i think that's more of an insult if you're grace wells bonner you'd probably be a bit annoyed N number one you'd be annoyed that you're on the list and number two you'd be annoyed that you're 19 that's a little bit mm, i'm not really for that we continue um lev tanju from i guess this is from palace right again as much as i hate the brand right and i hate the fucking faux you know hard nut fucking image they have of it and everything about it and it's obviously a little bit cringe and it's turned into a massive collaboration incubator 18 is also kind of low as much as i fucking detest everything about the brand right and if i see another fucking trifig i'm gonna fucking vomit over my own shirt you know and people that wear fucking loafers with their tracksuit pants and sovereigns and gold tooth caps and fucking drink Stella, you know, and Amstel outside of pubs and shit. It's annoying. Let's be honest. 18 is low. They scummed them. The palace should be way higher. They should be definitely top 10. Like, definitely top 10. Not above Kanye, but definitely top 10. Um, it continues. Salili Bembry, 17. Again, I think it's too low for him. When you think about the influence those fucking um, crocs have had, on everybody when you think back to the versaces that he did um the what you call it the link i forgot the name of him the l double link i forgot what the name of him but you know what i'm talking about um you think about his aesthetic overall you think about stuff that he did with new balance um yeah 17 is too low way too way too fucking low um joe fresh goods again 16 for me is probably too low for his influence collaborations wise activations wise the storytelling um, what he means for his local community, um, just in terms of representation. I know it shouldn't be a thing, but still, yeah, too low. Too, too, too low. Um, James Whitner, who is the guy from, I guess, what's that phone called again? Uh, Whitaker Group. What's, that? what's Whitaker Group? I don't know Whitaker Group. There's one thing I don't know. I thought he was from the other one, the one that's got the French name, that do the Jordan collaborations. But I don't really know this guy, so I'm not really... Is that that's him, right? Yeah, that is. He's from the shop called um, Amar Menia in Atlanta, right? So, I don't know. This is more of an American thing as well, isn't it? Because if it's worldwide and he's there, where does Pat fit into it then? Because Pat is fucking worldwide. And I think Pat has got, is way more well-known or way more influential in culture than, um, uh, how do you pronounce it? Amar Menia. He has to do a good collaboration, but I think outside of the collabs of the shoes, do people really care about the clothes that much? I'm not really too sure. It's very American, you know, type of thing. It's obviously come from American perspective, a complex. But let's see what Patrick is compared to them. Let's continue. Nigo at 414 is wild. To be fair, maybe Nigo is kind of, you know, he's grown out of streetwear. He's not really a streetwear guy anymore. So maybe this is a bit of an insult to him also. Um, but having him at 14 is kind of wild considering the influence that he's had, considering that he is one of the godfathers of streetwear alongside Hiroshi Fujiwara. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure about that one. Uh, maybe I wouldn't have him on the list. I'd be a bit more strict with that one. Tyler, the creator, I think, should be on the list. That's a very, that's a bit of a wild card, but I would include him on there. Collaborations with Converse, his own um, line when it comes to um, Golf Le Fleur, when it comes to the re, you know, um, or the future, sorry, the Golf, uh, obviously, has been relaunched. Um, his approach, you know, his activations with his fragrance and all that stuff. I think he should be a good choice as a wild card. I probably have him maybe a bit low in the list, but he's a good addition on there. It's thirteen. Rigi Villasenor, even though he did the he did the old scammy scam with Rude. Interesting at number twelve. Having Rude above Yeezy is actually rude. 
to be honest <laughs> you know and if you've got people suing you should you be on these lists anyway if you've got one of your partners with an open lawsuit against you because you've been allegedly embezzling funds to fund your birkin purchases and flights around the world should you really really be on a list about with brands i don't really know and i also think maybe this list maybe he belongs on this list five years ago i think he would have belonged on it but does he belong on it right now that's the thing that I'm fucking thinking. I'm not really too sure about. Should he be on this list right now? I don't really know. You know, that's the only thing I'm really kind of dubious about, to be completely honest. Um, did they mention the fucking, the, the lawsuit? Uh, Vince Nunez had a rough 2000, yeah, they did, right? 2023. Um, in May, he parted away with Bally after just one season. Actually, you know what's funny? Since he left Bally, those boots he designed, the last collection, the yellow ones, the snakeskin ones, and the mules, a lot of my fashion Twitter friends have been going goo goo gaga over them. So it's a bit sad and bittersweet that he didn't get a chance to, you know, finish that story. Um, but now, you know, after the fact, people are realizing, oh, those boots were actually really nice. Those mules were actually incredibly luxurious, comfortable, and just swaggy. And now they're going crazy for them. But I guess, you know, maybe the new person comes in and doesn't want to you know carry on the style maybe the the bally brand don't want to carry on but yeah i saw that um roughly a month later he was named in a lawsuit that accused him of funding his own personal expenses with millions of dollars from his brand um rude revenue ironically villa senior's luxury excursions amid yachts and mediterranean waters had helped grow the brand exactly a law is because um people associate villa senior and his clothing with an aspirational lifestyle he's basically like the andrew tate of clothing right <laughs> if that makes sense right that's basically what he's doing he's he's in it like actually i think about it aaron bondroff was ahead of his time he was the one that kind of to me told you know was preaching the doctrine or preaching the philosophy or preaching the fucking gospel of turning your lifestyle into a job being able to just make money being you and these guys obviously figured it out in their own ways, but he was the first person I heard do that. And I think I think he mentioned it in one of the early Heron Preston interviews. It doesn't really exist on the internet anymore. He interviews Heron Preston. And it's all about lifestyle design. It's all about self-actualization, speakers of it to existence and shit. But that lifestyle design shit is something that I always kind of hold dear to my heart. And I think I'm currently pursuing it, obviously now with the podcasting and streaming thing that I'm doing now, where you get to kind of, you know, live life on your terms, doing the things that you actually enjoy. Um, and yeah, and uh rude took that and ran with it right um da -da -da. so yeah they're, they're, they're talking about that but okay let's continue martin rose at 11 is incredibly low personally for me also um when you're talking about influence on streetwear and fashion i think she's probably i think you could you have to choose between martin rose and grace balls bonner you can't have both i think i would choose martin rose or grace Ball bonner because of her influence across you know, being able to kind of link streetwear and menswear and fashion together, the obviously the footwear collaborations, the history with Denmark, all of that sort of stuff in one, I think kind of plays its role. And obviously, you know, people go Google Gaga over her clothes, like fashion kids and streetwear kids fucking love Martin Rose. So I'd probably put her in that list, but obviously you have to choose between one or the other. You couldn't have Grace Wells Bonner and Martin Rose in this list, in my opinion. Um, Cactus Plant obviously belongs in this list. It doesn't need to be argued about. You might not like what they do, but, you know, they are very influential. Who's the founders on there? The founders are um, Camilla Ekel from Triple Five Soul and Erin McGee. Um, Really? Oh no! This, sorry, this is not what we're saying. That's not the person. The person's somebody else. It's like an Asian lame. So the the, the article says, with exceptions of Camila Echo and Erin McGee from Supreme, um, it's been historically difficult for women to make a name in the male-dominated streetwear. They should have also included Leah McSweeney of Married to the Mob. She's also an OG. But Catus Plan has done it. Blah 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 blah. Okay, cool. Um, Travis Scott's involved there in the streetwear thing. He probably should be involved. I that thinks a good sign. We've got David Sinatra from I guess from Stussy. Okay, is that, is that who's that who's leading the thing? His name's David Sinatra. Fucking cool. Um, David Sinatra is what well, isn't well known. Most of the names on this, but when you're CEO of the biggest uh, the, you're the streetwear brand, uh, 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 yeah, cool. So Stussy belongs on there for sure. I wonder where Supreme is then. Oh, come on, this is fucking bullshit. Alexander Arnold, he can't dress. Do you see when he had to put his fucking Tiffany Air Force Ones on and he was sitting at the NBA game? He looks like he could be one of Trump's sons. He's got zero swag. How can Alexander Arnold be on the streetwear power rankings just because his dad owns fucking LVMH and he gets to run Kering and, Tiff and Tiffany, 
you know, in the biggest case of nepotism you've ever seen in your entire life and produces one of the worst Air Force One Tiffany collaborations I've seen in my entire life also. Watch, wait opportunity. He shouldn't be on that list. Come on, come on. Just because you, again, you're the head of, your, again, of Tiffany and, and Ramoa doesn't mean you should be on the streetwear power ranking. Really, think about it. What are they putting him on there because of the Ramoa Supreme collaboration? Like, that is insane. Nah, he doesn't belong in that list at all. That's a horrible addition. He's above he's above Kanye. Come on, bro. Um, Ronnie Fake should be on there from Kiff. Yep, we know that. James Jebber should be, you know, that's that that goes without saying. It's funny, they're gonna put Tremaine above James Jebbia. <laughs> Then them tears isn't come on, bro. I I like that what they do and stuff. They've got some cool jeans. They've got some decent bits and pieces, but you can't say in a streetwear power ranking that Denim Tears has more influence than Supreme. Just through pure numbers alone, it's not true. Through pure influence, it's not true. Through years in the game, it's not true. And through the time that they're still at the top of their level, at the top of the game, it's not true. This is a crazy list. I think Tremaine's going to be above James Jebbia. Yeah, Pharrell's number four which is an odd addition because he's not, again, he's also evolved out of streetwear now for the most part. Um, you got Jerry Lorenzo, he probably should be on that list, but again, should he be above Ye? Ye taught him. Like, it's odd, right, Jeremy? I mean, your, your mentor, you're above your mentor, even though you, the work that you do isn't as forward thinking as your, anyway, whatever. Um, I'm still curious to see what the Adidas collaboration happens there. I wonder what's going on. Adidas and these brands, that are not Nike are so slow to move, right? They don't move quickly. Like that girl that won the US Open, um, I forgot her name, sorry, the black girl, kind of his name escapes me. There's a really amazing clip of her when she's young watching the fucking, you know, US Open. She might look just like she's like 10 or something. If that was Nike, they would have had that in an advert um, or in some sort of skit or in some Instagram short or something. Very, very quickly done already. But he's, because she signed to New Balance, it doesn't happen quickly enough. The yeah, Edison Jay Lorenzo stuff, it should, you know, there's all this hype around it. It was going to be a basketball thing. It was going to be sportswear. It wasn't just going to be, you know, um, lifestyle stuff. We still haven't seen anything. The wheels are moving super slow. And I wonder what's going on. Is it just like a, you know, money thing? Are they not sure it's going to work? Is there, what what's going on? Like, we're still waiting for him to drop. He hasn't dropped. Number two, Tremaine Emery. Come on, bro. That's too high. He should be probably top 10, but he doesn't belong ab above all those other mentions, like, names I mentioned. Especially not James Jebby. That's insane. Who's number one? Teddy Santos from what? Uh, 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 Amelion Dior. That's a weird addition of number one. Really and truly, that's super, super strange. Number one, Amy... I don't even think they should be above Stussy and Supreme. They still got the, the biggest grip on most people. Most kids, you know, that fucking eight ball jumper or anything with an eight ball on it, anything with a Stussy script, anything with a Supreme logo on it, anything that's been worn by one of those cool kids that skate for Supreme, like Tyshawn and all those dudes, sells like hotcakes. They should probably be one and two and the rest can fight for their other positions. But Teddy Santos, number one. Him, number one, and that kid super guy being last, just threw the whole list off to me and having both Martin Rose and Gross Bonner throws a list off for me having both Travis Scott and Tyler throws it off me I think you have to choose one of the one or one or the other to make the list a bit more concise and obviously include some other names here that haven't been included but yeah this is a weird list man as a as a power ranking a bit of a strange one um but again it goes to show the undenying influence on streetwear overall but hey what do I know what do I know